What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Gem Mint Collectibles. Got a special video in a new segment that I think I'm going to do, which is titled uh, Every Omnibus So Far. So this is every Spider-Man Omnibus so far. I figure since I got a full collection here, it'd be good to go over every book for a character and uh, talk about what issues they cover. And it'd be a good reference uh, video for a lot of people. Anyway, I started with Spider-Man because he has the most on the bus for a solo character. Um, X-Men has the same amount of omnibus, but that's for a team. And uh, Captain America is pretty close. Not only that, I have read most of these, so at least I'll be somewhat knowledgeable of the subject and not have to say, you know, I haven't read this one yet. So, uh, there's 14 omnibus total. I'm trying to think if there's any solicited Spider-Man books coming out, but I don't think there are. So anyway, let's go over them. We'll start with Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. This is the first print, original omnibus, one of the first ones. You can see how uh, it's so much thicker than the other two volumes. The second print of this is like the same width because the paper's thinner. But um, this was one of the first ones I actually picked up. Uh, and it's a beast, man. So this covers... Amazing Fantasy 15, Spider-Man's first appearance. Then it has Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 38, Annuals 1 and 2, Strange uh, Tales Annual 2, and Fantastic Four Annual 1. So you get a hell of a lot of books in this uh, run. I wonder if I can show you guys this. There you go. So with these older Marvel Omnibus, underneath the dust jacket is nothing much. It's a, a black leather bound book. With the gray uh, spine. Look at this thing, man. It's like freaking a dictionary. So here goes this is amazing Spider-Man Annual 1. So the Amazing Spider-Man initial run is arguably one of the best runs of first appearances out of any uh, Marvel Silver Age book. You could argue between that and Fantastic Four. So AF-15, first appearance of Spider-Man. Then you got Amazing Spider-Man 1, first appearance of J. Jonah Jameson, the Chameleon. Um, oh yeah, AF-15, first uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May as well. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the first Vulture. Amazing Spider-Man 3 is the first Doc Ock, first Sandman, first Lizard, first uh, Electro, Mysterio, first Green Goblin, first Craven, first Sinister Six. First Scorpion, you got a ton of first appearances here. Um, first um, Gwen Stacy, Harry Osborn, and uh, some other minor appearances as well. But you get a hell of a lot of bang for your buck in this book. <sighs> Big ass book too, man. So that's Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. Now, the cover is Amazing Fantasy 15, the original uh, Jack Kirby cover. Um, I don't know if they consider this to be the variant or the regular. I think the variant is the Alex Ross version. When, with these classic Marvel omnibus, I always go for the original covers. I just feel like the cover needs to match the material that's inside. Then we have... Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2. This is the first print, which was a whale until it was reprinted. But the cover is ASM... What is it? 39. That's what I thought. Um, Green Goblin cover by John Romita, I believe. Uh, volume 2 covers Amazing Spider-Man 39 through 67. Annuals 3 and 5. And the Spectacular Spider-Man 1 and 2 that original uh, magazine series. So you got the spine, the front, the the direct market variant was that Ramos cover, terrible. But I would have stuck with the original cover anyway. So very similar looking to volume one, but the pages are not as thick. And it has, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Pages aren't as thick, so it's not, the book is not as thick. Give you some idea of the interiors, you know, traditional Silver Age Spidey. Classic stuff, though, man. 
There goes that magazine, Spectacular Spider-Man. You might be familiar with that cover. So in this book, what do we get that's notable? First Kingpin, first Rhino, Death of Norman Osborn. Um, anything else? Any other first appearances? No? There might be something I missed. Spider Slayers or some bullshit. But anyway, uh, great stuff. Spider-Man used to be my favorite character growing up as a kid. I don't know if I'd consider him my favorite anymore. But, um... His Silver Age books are very collectible, man. A lot of people try to go for that whole run graded uh, by CGC. And like I said, a lot of first appearances. This is the most recent volume in the original Amazing Spider-Man run, Volume 3. This is the direct market variant, which is the original cover for ASM, what is it, 101? 101, first Morbius. The uh, variant was something totally different, um, which I was not willing to get. So like I mentioned, you got your first Morbius, you got your um, Amazing Spider-Man 100, which is the uh, first anniversary issue. I don't know if I show this in Amazing Volume 2. You got the uh, drug issues with Harry Osborn that was not approved by the Comics Code. And some other shit. This collects Amazing Spider-Man 68 through 104. Now I feel bad if I didn't show you guys the back of Volume 2. Here's the back of Volume 2 for those who want to see it. Cool. So Volume 3 has a similar front. Actually, no, it doesn't. This is not uh, that silver... It's a, it's a different feel altogether. It doesn't feel like that leather-bound style and the spine is color. Actually, I just took this out of the wrap, man. I've read most of these Silver Age issues, um, but I haven't read out this omnibus yet. So they got some Prowler stuff. Let's see what else we got here. So, that's volume three. That's the furthest along we got so far in that first Amazing Spider-Man run. Here's the cover for the variant. So, this cover, this direct market cover, um, this one is sold out. So, on in-stock trades, you can only get that cover I showed you on the inside there. Uh... So that sucks if you, you know, want to collect the original covers. Now let's get into the Untold Tales of Spider-Man Omnibus. So I remember getting these as a kid growing up. They were on the stands. And from what I recall, these are like stories that happened during that uh, initial Amazing Spider-Man run. That were kind of like, I don't know if you want to call them backup stories, you know, untold tales, whatever. I remember liking the story. So this is cool. This is a leather, a red leather bound book with a blue shiny uh, logos or whatever. So pretty cool stuff. I like this because I like the art for the times. It's like that 90s art, that McFarlane, Bagley, uh, Larson kind of style. But it takes place, you know, after those issues. Let me see. Does it say anything? I was wondering if it said when it took place or whatever. But anyway, so that's why it's Untold Tales. Let me see if it says anything on the back. A collection of all new adventures set in the earliest days of the Wondrous Web Slinger's career. So it gets, uh, did I tell you what was in the back of this? Yeah. This collects Amazing Fantasy from 95, issues 16 and 18. Then you got Untold Tales with Spider-Man 1 through 25. Uh, annual from 96 to 97, and Strange Encounter, and material from Amazing Spider-Man Annual 37. So that's what you get in your Untold Tales Spider-Man Omnibus. It's actually a cool book, man. I like the colors they use for it. They have a different cover for that too, but I don't remember what it is. All right, then you have Spider-Man by Roger Stern. So this is not the DM cover. Um, this was like a variant cover. The original one, 
Was it on the back here? It wasn't Amazing Spider-Man 238. It wasn't that first Hobgoblin appearance, but the variant... Oh, yeah, that's what it was. The one where he's pulling his uh, Hobgoblin's mask off. Mask off. That's the variant cover that... I didn't even know about variant covers back when I bought this. So this is Roger Stern Omnibus. This covers Spectacular Spider-Man 43 through 61, issue 85, and then Amazing Spider-Man 206, 224 through 252, and Annual 16 and 17. So it covers the first appearance of Hobgoblin and that whole arc, and then it ends on 252, which is the first appearance of the black suit, uh, the symbiote. And at the time, you don't know where it came from, so... Amazing Spider-Man 252 came out first. He's got the black suit, nobody knows why. And then Secret Wars 8 comes out that shows you where he gets it from. So here's the Spider-Man by Roger Stern. The spine is color. This is getting into more uh, copper, bronze age. More bronze age stuff. Let me stretch it because I don't remember when the last time I cracked this. So anyway, I plan to do some, you know, a lot more of these, um, every omnibus. I mean, I, I could do every Captain America omnibus, every Deadpool omnibus, every X-Men. I think I'm going to continue to do that. We'll see how this one goes, but I have a feeling, um, people are going to enjoy this, you know, because it, like I said, it acts as a good, uh, reference point. Here goes the first appearance of Hobgoblin 238. That's actually the reason why I like to get into uh, I like to uh, getting into omnibus because I used to collect CGC key issues, and I was into high grades and you know you have a cool book very clean it's in the slab it's got the like the nice notes on the on the um, whatever you call the shit on you know first appearance and why it's relevant, but then I saw these omnibus and I'm like damn man this is collecting the stories of these key books. Uh, of these key books that I'm collecting, so you know, picked up that ASM volume one and it was on from there. So, actually, uh, this should have been included in my whale video. This is a whale of a book. This is The Amazing Spider Man, uh, Spider Man by Todd McFarlane and David, David, how do you say his name? Michelini, Mussolini, whatever. Epic fucking run here, man. This is uh, Amazing Spider Man 296 through 329, so that includes. The first uh, cameo appearance of Eddie Brock and Venom, first full Venom, then Todd McFarlane's whole run with that whole assassination nation thing, where basically he just had the opportunity to draw all his favorite villains. And yeah, so this is the, uh, I don't know if this is the variant or not. The variant is still a white background, but has Spider-Man in the black suit, like on ASM uh, 300. And I, actually, yeah, that one is the one that goes for more money. But they're both out of print, and they're both whales. That's just a whalier of the two. So this is like that original shiny uh, silver shit. You got your Buck Farland art right here. So, man, gotta love McFarland, right? He really changed the game on Spider-Man. His Venom shit, I loved. I like that Venom the best, man. I'm not a fan of that huge, monstrous Venom. I like Venom being a little bit muscu more muscular, you know, not so much with the teeth and the mouth and the tongue. It, it was freaky enough that he looked like Spider-Man but had a mouth. To me, that was, that was creepy enough, you know? Anyway, great stories. This was one, also one of the first omnibus that I ever had. I actually got it uh, at my comic shop for cover price. At a time when it was already sold out. Uh, and I read it. And I read these stories more than once. But I actually, you know, I read this whole book. Uh, then what we have here is Spider-Man. Not the amazing Spider-Man. Just Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. So this includes Spider-Man 1 through 14. And issue 16. Because he didn't do issue 15. Uh, and X-Force number 4. Because that was like a... a um, a two-part story with Spider-Man 16 and X-Force 4, and the whole shit was, like, horizontal. But that's the iconic cover for Spider-Man number one. Then you have, you know, 
the Spider-Man issues on the back that Todd McFarlane drew and wrote. People are not the biggest fan of the writing on this book, but you gotta love the art. So, this is the first Spider-Man book so far that has artwork for the actual book. How fitting, right, for, for it to be Todd McFarlane's book, because that's what he's known for. So, you got your Spider-Man art. Spider-Man Wolverine and Wendigo, or Wendigo. That McFarlane art there. Beautiful book. I'm not sure if this went out of print or not. I don't think so. People were turned off by the size of the Omnibus, how it was so small. But Omnibus really just collects um, the whole storyline from a creative team. It's, it's more about the creative team than maybe even the story arc. So that collects all of McFarlane's uh, solo run on Spider-Man. Then we go into Spider-Man by David Michelini and Eric Larson, which I'm also a big fan of. I can't remember what the variant cover was for this. But anyway, this uh, collects Amazing Spider-Man 287, 324, 327, then 329 through 350. And Sp um, Spider-Man from that McFarlane run issues uh, 15, 18, 21 through 23. Then it goes back to Amazing Spider-Man when it's in uh, volume 2, I guess you can call it. And that's issues 19 through 21. And it's got material from Marvel Comics Presents, 48 through 50. And some material from, from Spider-Man, 19 uh, through 20. So, what's notable about here? So, you have the continuation of McFarlane's run. You got the Wolverine and Spider-Man stuff from Marvel Comics Presents. You got the Return of the Sinister Six, the Return of Venom... You got the uh, first cameo of Cletus Cassidy in uh, ASM 344, who later becomes Carnage. And some other good stuff. So here's the back. So Larson, to me... Oh, and here we go. The front is the same design. Spine is the same. And then the back is the Return of the Sinister Six. To me, McFarlane, I mean, Larson borrowed heavily from McFarlane's style. But to me, I think it was fitting because he's he was continuing his run. So to have a, damn, they put, they really over-sexualized the shit out of Mary Jane here. I hated how they portrayed Mary Jane in this, uh, in this run, man. Was not a fan. Got the black and red Spidey. So anyway, yeah, he was continuing McFarlane's run. So rather than a drastic change in the art direction, I kind of like that. He took his style and ran with it and kind of made it his own. Um, I hope they do a Bagley omnibus. I think, I think Bag, uh, Bagley's in that same boat, but I think Bagley is uh, my favorite Spider-Man artist. He took that McFarlane style, and, and to me, he just uh, refined it and made it much more cleaner. But I'm sure many will debate with that. I know McFarlane is the one for most Spidey fans. McFarlane's Spider-Man art to me was a little bit sloppy. I thought the proportions were a little bit sloppy and the line work and stuff. You know, he over he always overdid the detail. I love McFarlane, don't get me wrong, but that's just my, my critique about him. Then we jump into some people's least favorite Spider-Man arc. But one of my favorites, The Clone Saga. The Clone Saga Volume 1, get ready, contains Web of Spider-Man 117 through 125, Amazing Spider-Man 394 through 401, Spider-Man 51 through 58, Spectacular Spider-Man 217 to 224, Spider-Man Unlimited 7 through 9, Spider-Man Funeral for an Octopus 1 through 3, and then Spider-Man The Clone Journal and some material from Spider-Man Collector's Preview. Man, I should have had a bottle of water to do this video. Anyway, here's the issues that this book contains. I love the artwork on this one. I actually just cracked this one out of the, uh, 
the, the cellophane there because I've read these in the um, trade paperbacks that collected all these issues. But, um... But I haven't opened this one yet, so I just opened it for this video. I love the clone stuff, man. I love me some... Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider. I love it when he becomes a new Spider Man with that new costume. You know, that's the whole thing with Spider Man. When you give him the new costume, like, you know, that's what it's all about. Here goes Ben Riley as Scarlet Spider. So basically, Scarlet Spider, you know, he's a clone, but he can't help but be a hero. So he goes off and does his Scarlet Spider thing. Then, uh, spoilers, you know, from 30 years ago. Then it's found out that he's actually Peter Parker. He's actually the real deal. Then he takes over the mantle as being Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man, you know, and Mary Jane's pregnant. So he decides to, uh, let Ben Riley take over. And then they retcon that whole thing later on. So this is volume one. Oops. And then here's volume two. So we went over this in one of my haul videos. Let's talk about what it covers. It covers Amazing Spider-Man 402 through 406. And then Super Special Spider-Man uh, 59 through 63. Super uh, and Super Special, which is all that Planet of the Symbiote stuff. Spectacular Spider-Man 225 to 29. Web of Spider-Man 126 to 129. Uh, all the super specials from those runs, Venom Super Special. It also has New Warriors 61 through 66, Spider-Man the Jackal Files, Spider-Man Maximum Clonage Alpha and Omega, Spider-Man Unlimited 10, Spider-Man Team of 1, Spider-Man The Lost Years 1 through 3, and Spider-Man The Parker Years. That's a lot of Spider-Man in the title. So there's one more volume, I believe, due out for this to complete it. Can't wait. Add it to the add it to the fold. Here goes some jackal and Spider-Man goodness. Or Peter Parker or Ben Riley. I don't know which one it is. Some Punisher. You gotta love 90s Punisher, boy. Here goes some Spider Side in the New Warriors books. I like the Spider Side character, man. I remember getting the action figures back in the day and all that. Some Scarlet. Cool. So, moving forward. This is, I believe, the most recent Spider-Man Omnibus. It might have been released right with that Eric Larson book, now that I think about it, though. But um, I was a big Spider-Man uh, fan in the 90s. Uh, so when this book came out, or when it was solicited, rather, I didn't even know what the hell it was. Spider-Man Tangled Web. This is the original cover. The variant cover I wasn't a fan for. It was like that black cover in the middle with the Spider-Man logo. I read half of this. It's kind of off-the-wall stuff, man. It reminded me a lot of the Edge of the Spider-Verse kind of stuff. But it's um, Tangled Web 1 through 4 and Spider-Man's Tangled Web 5 through 22. So it sounds like they just renamed the title here. But, yeah, I mean, this wasn't really my bag, to be honest with you. Uh, this was actually the, the variant cover, which I passed on. So, to me, um, yeah, see, this is kind of crazy shit. That's whatever. Look at this. Looking, like, realistic. Um, I wouldn't really recommend this omnibus. I mean, I gotta finish reading it, but... It wasn't. A, it was a little bit out there, and it wasn't like the Spider Man that I knew. So, wasn't the biggest fan. Anyway, moving on, we have two omnibus from uh, the Bendis Ultimate Universe. We have Ultimate Spider Man Volume One. Which I've read a lot of stories. And the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, universe out of curiosity. Like, I, 
I wanted to see how they retold the Venom origin and Carnage and the Clone Saga in this universe. So basically, um, this is Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 39 and Ultimate Spider-Man 1 half, which is probably a, a wizard thing from Wizard Magazine. Um, this was a retelling of Spider-Man's origin in modern times. We get another red leather book. Very cool. This, is, this kind of put Bendis on the map for Marvel. You know, it's more of a modern take, modern art. The symbiote was made in a factory and not on a battle world during Secret Wars and shit like that. So it was it was just supposed to be more, more modern, I guess, is the best way to say it. The problem is, they never continued with this run through Volume 2. And you can only finish the run in hardcover by getting the oversized hardcovers. You need to get Volumes... I think it's 4 through 12, which I kind of planned on doing, but it's not really high on my to-do list. Uh, then you get one more omnibus, so it's actually, so this is the beginning of the run, this is the end of the run. This is the death of Spider, well, the ult death of Ultimate Spider-Man, which collects um, Ultimate Spider-Man uh, 15 and 150 through 160, Ultimate Comics Avengers vs. New Ultimates 1 through 6, and Ultimate Comics Fallout 1 through 6. So I've had... I kind of got back into comics around this time. And I had the issues in single issues. Where they introduced Miles Morales. And spoil, spoiler alert. Peter dies and Miles um, gets bit by a spider too. And he, he gets you know similar spider powers. And takes over the mantle of Spider-Man. And, and all that good stuff. So... Um, I just get back into comics from not being into comics in the 90s, right around the Death of Superman stuff, to see black, a black poly bag Death of Spider-Man. And I was like, really? <laughs> Marvel didn't really learn much over these last couple of decades, you know? But um, it was cool stuff, man. Mar Miles, you know, he's standing the test of time. He's still around. The Ultimate Universe is no longer around. But um, the more recent Secret Wars... Um, event into that universe and, and and basically just kept the good stuff all right the last omnibus um it's kind of odd that they made an omnibus for the superior foes of spider-man and not superior spider-man i do have the whole superior spider-man run in oversized hardcover but for whatever reason they made a full omnibus of this one a lot of people like this i read this digitally when it came out this is Superior Foes of Spider-Man 1 through 17. Uh, that's it. And it basically, you, you're, you're seeing this through the perspective of the villains. And it tries to humanize them a little bit. And, you know, it's kind of like a funny, witty kind of read. A lot of people love it. It wasn't really my thing, to be honest. But um, I never cracked it because I've already read these stories. But look at this. So you get some artwork on the actual book. Um, it does a good a good job of taking D-list characters and kind of giving them a little bit of time to shine. And it was tying in with Superior Spider-Man, which was a great fucking run, man. Otto as, uh, in Spider-Man's body. That was a good run. I don't know what the hell they're doing now. I kind of fell off the new Amazing Spider-Man ever since Peter got his uh, body back and became a, a cheap knockoff of, of Tony Stark. Anyway, um, we're reaching 30 minutes. I don't know if this is going to get cut off or not, but I had a request from somebody on YouTube, and he might have been in the Omnibus group, to go over this um, book stand. It's actually a cookbook stand. I, I was on Omnibros Live with, with uh, Gabe Infinity Watch, and I showed it a little bit. So it comes like this flat thing, and the back opens up, and it has, you know, this to prop it up and there's three notches so you can have three levels of uh whatever three angles then this front part comes out so what you do is you put the book on here like a cookbook like your grandmother used to do back in the day right and you don't have to so you could read it just like this or if a if you have a big book and you know, maybe the pages are flopping around. 
they have those little page holders there. So somebody in the comments asked me to break this down a little bit more. Uh, it's at Barnes & Noble right now. I threw out the box. I forget what it was called. Some kind of bamboo book holder it's called. But um, that's that. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. In the comments, let me know what you guys want to see next. So we could do every Daredevil omnibus. Every Fantastic Four omnibus. We could do every Batman omnibus. Every Batman absolute. Whatever. Uh, Deadpool. Fucking Thor. Captain America. Avengers. Uh, any Every Marvel cosmic omnibus. So... You know, leave some comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see and what you guys think of the new, um, I don't know what you call this. Not a new format. The, the new, uh, top, I don't know. It's a new series of videos that I plan on doing. Anyway, thanks for checking in. Catch you guys next time. Peace.